join me for Ask the Good Doctor live today and every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 12 noon Central Standard Time, and 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Bring your questions. Good afternoon. Welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. LaJoyce Brookshire and welcome to Ask the Good Doctor. I am here to help you attain, maintain, and reclaim your perfect health. So please grab your Good Doctor notebook and don't miss this episode. I want to talk to you about something pretty personal today in addition to teaching you about pet power. That's right. You know, owning a pet really gives you power physically. And some people don't care for pets. They don't want to be able to have to care for one. I personally am a dog mommy and I love my fur babies. I've had several and adopt a pet if you haven't considered it. It really is a selfless act, but there are really a lot of reasons to embrace pet ownership. And a lot of them we are because of the physical positivity that it brings to us. Number one, it's reduce stress because research has shown that simply petting a dog lowers the stress hormone cortisol just by petting the dog. Can you imagine? Even if it's not yours. While social interaction between people and their dogs actually increases levels of the feel-good hormone oxytocin, which is the same hormone that bonds mothers and babies. Can you imagine? That is such the feel good thing that we seem to ignore or really don't speak enough about. In fact, 84% of post-traumatic stress disorder patients paired with a service dog reported a significant reduction in symptoms and 40% were able to decrease their medications. That is mind blowing. Just by having a pet that it could help you to reduce your medication with PTSD. That's phenomenal. It also helps to lower the blood pressure because the cortisol lowering oxytocin boosting benefits of Petting also help to keep your blood pressure at bay. So petting and holding an animal allows you to anticipate the beauty of nature. And that's exactly why I live in the woods, because I get to see the beauty of nature. It helps you to increase your physical activity. That's right. How many people are willing to go outside at the crack of dawn and exercise in the rain or the snow or the sleet or the hell? Well, if you have a dog, you don't really have a choice unless you just have a yard and just let them run wild. But dog owners, we know all about this. We have to walk the pet, thus providing them with an exercise proof daily dose of exercise. And that's exercise for you. It's exercise for your dog, and it is also a bonding moment. Here's the good one. I love this fact. It boosts the heart health. That's right, because the American Heart Association released a research report endorsing dog ownership as a way of warding off cardiovascular disease. Why is that? Because you have to take the dog outside. That's why, and that gets those blood vessels constricted. Ding. And when the blood vessels are constricting and pumping, cardiovascular disease cannot set itself up. All right. Here's the best one. This is the social one. It eases loneliness and depression. That's right. A pet gives you something to live for other than yourself. And when you know you need to walk the dog, even though you don't want to walk the dog, a 2011 study found that pet owners had better self-esteem. And another study determined that pets provided greater social support than humans in mitigating depression. How about that? That doesn't mean throw out your therapist, y'all. Okay. It just means this is an additional support. Caring for a pet provides a sense of purpose to the owner, they say. All right. And it also helps many specific health con concerns like simple companionship. And they've been wonderful helpers for years for people who cannot see 
or people with mobility issues. Dogs are even being used to help detect conditions from seizures to cancer and diabetes. Here's a true story. My dear friend, my dearly departed friend, she was my bestest friend in the world, Claudette, she had a dog who actually was one of mine that was a result of a brood of 12 in the litter. And her dog, Diamond, detected that she was in the middle of a diabetic episode. And she, Claudette kept trying to go to sleep, but Diamond would not allow her to sleep. Taking the covers off of her, biting at her feet, he wouldn't let her rest, he wouldn't let her lay down. And when she finally gave in and went to eat, she had to take her, her blood sugar. And when she saw her numbers were escalated to the point of danger, if she would have gone to sleep, she could have died. And the dog detected that because it has a really accurate smell. So if you know someone who is diabetic and lives alone, that dog can save their life. Yes. So I have a furry friend. Show that picture, Chris. Thank you. His name is Hunter. And I have to say his name was Hunter. Hunter died. We had to have Hunter put down the other day. I'm going to try to get through this without crying. He had a clean bill of health two weeks ago when he went to the vet. And then a couple of days later, he went to get his monthly grooming. And the other day he woke up and he could not see. And it was devastating for us to watch him bump around and we're trying to figure out what to do. So We've had Hunter 12 years, so he's 80. He was 84, and I didn't want to just put him down. I called a shelter. I called a couple of places that take senior dogs with disability, and all of them told me the exact same thing. Sure, we'll take him. Sure, we will love him until the end, but you're his people. That's his house. He'll have to get used to an entirely different new environment, and that brings on more trauma. And then they say, how old is Hunter? And I said, 12. And they all said, oh, you know, and the kind of dog that he was, a Rottweiler Shepherd. Really, we've defied the odds by several years. That breed lived seven to nine years, and we got 12. And so all of them said, you might want to let him go. Hard, hard decision to make, but we did. And our vet had a very peaceful room, tranquil, with the nice waterfalls and the leather furniture and a nice rug for us to sit on. And my dog was so spoiled. Um, he would eat organic. He ate organic food on his food. And he didn't want to eat the last couple of days. But I, I put green vibrance. Yes, I do. On my dog's food every day. So I put a scoop of green vibrance in my hand and he licked it out the last two days of his life. That's all he wanted was his green vibrance. Can you imagine that till the end? And in the vet's office, they gave him this ice cream cone, what looked like an ice cream cone. And I said, oh my gosh, you're going to give him ice cream. And they said, that's whipped cream in a cone. And I thought to myself, he's not going to eat that. And sure enough, that little spoiled little dog who loves organic food they put it up to his face, of course, because he couldn't see and it got all over his face and he went and shook it off. And I said, the way to go, Hunter, even until the end, you're not going to, he doesn't want the junk, even until the end. And they gave him his little shot. He got really relaxed and he laid in my daughter's lap, put his face in her lap. Then they gave him that shot and it was over. And I just came back to an empty house because this dog bark it down, okay? If you've been watching this show through the pandemic and even probably last month, Hunter at some point makes an appearance, okay? Because he is a protector of this property. And I, 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 I don't know if I'll have another dog anytime soon. I'm just gonna mourn and grieve and remember this one. But that's the power of a pet. And I came home and I made a decadent dinner so that we could have dinner together and toast Hunter. And we all dropped some morsels on the floor and laughed because we called him Hoover and uh, Hoover wasn't around. So we all, after dinner, we all grabbed a blanket and a couch and just sat with each other and watched television. That's all we could do. 
But that's the power of a pet. Bring a family together, grieve together, laugh together, love together. But more than all, that 12 years of joy. So if you've been considering whether or not you want a pet, I strongly consider it. I want you to strongly consider it. And I thank you for joining today. And excuse my tears, but it's just real. So thank you for joining me. Thanks, my team. IW supervising producer, Chris Green, technical producer and DJ Indy announcer to let your eyes shine, cut back on the wine, get good food fast and go easy on the greasy. Until next time, I'm Dr. LaJoyce Brookshire here to help you attain and maintain your perfect health. Let's do it again next week. Okay. God bless you.